everybody. You know, um, this is something that's real passionate to me. I am the executive director of Crisis Pregnancy Center. And in that calling, you know, I see uh, young ladies and young men coming through our doors with a lack of fathering. And when we see that lack of fathering, when they witness a strong male figure, something in them takes place. Something positive takes place within them. And what's interesting about that is that they begin to see themselves in a positive light. Please understand this, that every single social ill that we're dealing with is directly or indirectly related to fatherlessness. Do you realize that close to 81% of teen pregnancies come from fatherless homes? I'm talking 80% of all of our kids that are on the street right now homeless, fatherless homes. We're talking 71% of the male population in the penal system right now, fatherless homes. Now, these are just a few of the documented stats. I mean, the economic impact cannot even be calculated because it's estimated that 41% of the kids that are in fatherless homes will be poorer than their biological dad. It is just absolutely astonishing. Now, again, I'm the executive director of Crisis Pregnancy Center here in Reno, and I've developed a program called Daddy Academy. Now, the probability of these young men coming through our doors understanding what it is to be a father, it's pretty dim. Pretty, pretty dim, especially in light of the facts that I just mentioned. And so we, what we've done is we, we develop programs and we de develop workshops that are specifically designated to help them see the importance of father, fathering. And we've expanded this not only to our, our, uh, our uh, community outreach, and not only in our areas of, uh, of, our, of, our, of our teens, but we also spread it out in the community. We've got local, local judges that have uh, gra grabbed the whole of our programs. We have local people that are seriously involved in what we're trying to do. Now, the interesting thing about this, we've seen a dramatic change as a direct result of this program. You know, I was talking to some of our young ladies, and it was four things that they said that they wished they had. And those four things, when they grew up without a dad, was this. They said they wished they had protection. They said they wished they had provision. They said they wished they had presence. And they wished they had praise. Now, I want you to hear what's happening, because I've talked also to some of the guys out there, some of the pimps out there. And they said not every young lady is pimpable. But when she lacks those very things, when she lacks those things that would cause her to feel better about herself, she's more willing to do things that goes against her morals. It's unbelievably un uncanny, the father rift and the father wound that is so prevalent. We're talking 24 million children right now globally in fatherless homes. So I'm asking this, this afternoon for you to listen to what I have to say, because this wound is deep. It's extremely deep, and it affects our whole culture. Now, hear my heart when I say this. Mothers, I'm not saying that you're not doing a great job, because you are. But there's certain things that only a father can feel. There's only certain things that a dad can bring to bear. Now, I'll be, I'll be perfectly frank with you. I didn't have, didn't have a father growing up. My dad died when I was in middle school. And when he died when I was in middle school, it... it it, it caused me to grope for a father figure. And because I groped for a father figure, I looked for it everywhere. See, there's a deep desire in all of us for, to have significance. There's a deep desire for all of us to have a, a confirmation. Now, see, I, I would be remiss not to say this, being a pastor, but Jesus needed affirmation. For when he came up out of the water after being baptized, he said that he heard three things from heaven. He heard his father say this, you're my son, I love you, and I'm pleased with you. Now, if the Son of God needed affirmation from a father figure, you and I need that very same thing. My heart this afternoon is to talk to you and to convey to you the importance of fathering. Again, growing up without a father, there was things that I groped for. But I learned something. I learned that me fathering Others 
I can vicariously father myself. I can heal the father wound in me by fathering others. Now, fathering, I have, I, have, I guess you'd call them children or, or kids, men that are old enough to be my dad that I fathered, daughters that are old enough to be my mother, so ages of no significance. It's something that is deeply rooted within us, that affirmation that we must have. You know, I will share something extremely personal. Earlier this year, my sister died. And this is the, a long line of unfortunate siblings that have died in the last 10 years. And this was really personal. This one really hurt. Because my sister was more or less a, she was like a twin. A year older than me, but she was a twin. And I was broken, really broken. And I was just hurting. And of course, my family, my other family members called and said, we need you here. And so my wife and I, we made arrangements to make that six, seven hour drive from Reno to Henderson. And my son comes to me and he says, Dad, I'm going to go with you. I mean, I want to pay respects to my aunt, but I'm really, I want to be there for you. I said, oh, okay, son, I, I know that I need it. And so we make our trek there, and, and we get there, and about the day after, we go to the funeral home, and we begin to make the arrangements, and unfortunately, some of the things that my sister wanted, the funeral people didn't have prepared. And I began to get frustrated. Now, already, my, my, my heart is already broken, and I'm wounded, and my emotions are frayed. But it was interesting to me that my son, Dominic, he says, Dad, no, I'll take care of it. No, really, I'll take care of it, Pops. And he began to intervene on my behalf. He began to do some things and say some things that I recognized at that moment that he was my father. I recognized that the very things that I was looking for, the, the provision, the protection, the praise, all those things were coming out in the very one that I was supposed to be fathering, he began to father me. My point in this whole circumstance is that all of us have that desperate need. All of us have that desire to recognize that we're of worth. Now, when that happened to me, it caused a healing in my heart. Because, see, there was a father wound, and nationally and internationally, it's a father wound that only fathers can feel. Now, I'm going to ask something. Ask something great of you. You fathers, you dads that are out there, I want you to stand up. Now, whether you had a father or not, stand up. Now, I want you to do me a favor, men, because, see, this is a global issue, the global problem, a global issue, a global thing in which only men are the answer. Like I said before, our, our daughters... They need us. Our families, they need us. They need us. And so I'm going to ask something great of you, men. And I want you each to close your eyes. And I want you to do this. I want you to picture the best father. I want you to picture the best dad. I want you to picture him encouraging you, telling you he's proud of you, telling you, that you're the best. And I want you to think on that, and I want you to meditate on that, because see, it's a global men problem, and it's, we're the answer to that global issue. Now, keep them, stay focused, man. Now, this is what I challenge you, and I need for you to do. Go and be that very thing that you've just envisioned to those around you because it will change the trajectory of their lives. All you need to do is, is be compassionate. All you need to do is be willing to step outside of your comfort zone, and you can change the lives of many. To this very day, I have young men and older men calling me saying thank you very much for intervening in my life when I needed to hear some positive enforcement, some positive confirmation. You may be seated. And the, 
mid-90s, there was a movie that came out that I really enjoyed. It was called Boys in the Hood. And I really liked the movie. I really did. It was about a, a, a young man coming to age, and his mother, was kind of, he was getting kind of unruly with his mom. <laughs> the mother said, you need to go live with your dad. So, of course, she calls the pops, and he says, yes, let's, 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 I, I need to talk with him. And it was funny because he, one day in the scene, he grabs his son and he takes him outside and he says, I want you to rake these leaves. And he sees his friends, his, his buddies, his son's buddies across the way. And he says, he calls them over and says, hey, I want you to do me a favor. I want you, I want you guys to rake these leaves. I'll give you five bucks for it. He says, the guy says, the kids say, man, five bucks ain't, and I'll let you fill in the blanks. <laughs> and he said, they leave and he looks at his son. He says, son. I know that you, be, you think I'm being hard on you, but I'm trying to teach you responsibility. You see those guys over there? They don't have a father. And you're going to see how they end up. Now, the movie was great, and this character played a great role. But the frustrating thing I had about that is, is that he pronounced a prophecy over their lives. He declared something over them. He said, you're going to see how they end up. And unfortunately, they ended up the very way he thought they would. Question is this, how much more finances would have it taken him to simply take them with his son fishing? To take them with, with, with his son as he takes them bowling or takes them to their job, his job? How much more finances would have, ta- would have taken? The eternal difference that could have taken place as a result of him going outside of his comfort zone and beginning to invite those young men would have changed their lives. Again, I am the executive director of Crisis Pregnancy Center. And again, on a daily basis, I see the negative impact of fatherlessness. And these young ladies are desperately looking for someone. Now, it's amazing to me. I talked to some of the the caseworkers of some of the former ladies who were in prostitution. And they say this. They said, you know what? Their healing exponentially increases when a strong father figure is in their lives, not looking at them with wanting eyes, but encouraging them and letting them, them know how valuable they really are. All of us desire to hear that, especially our daughters. Again, I say that I'm not taking anything from my moms. But the issues that we're facing on a global perspective has everything to do with fatherlessness. You've heard the numbers. Then that was just a few of the stats. I say this in closing, and I ask you this in closing. Be the father that you've always wanted. Be the dad that you just envisioned to others. And not only will you heal them, you will vicariously father yourself through fathering others. It is a win-win situation. So I ask you, men, take it up and stand. Because in you, things can change. In you, a life that is going one direction can be changed by some positive affirmation from a father. I am passionate about this. I am unbelievably focused on this because I see daily the desperate need for fathers to step up and live in the lives of those who desperately need affirmation and encouragement. Thank you very much. Have a great day.